کلی اعلام Because of course we can see once we start the MRO, 
there are some aircraft that will be there that they are disabled and you can't move them. So we must expand our airport so that uh, when the, 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 the interim terminal cannot take more than two or three aircraft at the moment. So we are expanding that apron and we'll also expand this other apron. What the apron you have of the MR is just one third of what it should be so that we can have enough maneuvering space apart from the apron of the international terminal itself. So all those are ongoing at the moment and you see the people when we get on ground. Uh, we, we try to cut down costs by local training. So this is the training center and we bring a lot of people that come here and they give us lectures and whatever training they can do uh, locally. This is our training center. And good afternoon. This is uh, Dr. Williams from the IADC Rasibom Airport Development Company. We've just concluded the training of the SMS staff, which is set, uh, safety management systems for the airport and the search and rescue um, course for our search and rescue operatives. The training room will continue to host different kind of uh, trainings. We're looking at uh, we're starting our fire security training this year and then we'll continue with uh, basic aerodrome management courses. Thank you. The operator that will be working with us here will have passed all the approvals that are necessary for particularly the Boeing aircraft and the Airbus aircraft and also general aviation. It's also instructive that state government has spent at this point over 2.5 or then about billion on training. So all the engineers for this at, the, at that level are ready. Airframe and power plants, avionics, and in fact we had engineers trained for airport maintenance that already. So as soon as it starts, the operator will have supervisory level of uh, staff while we predict all the other ones. It will help us. At, in fact, after some years, we should be able to take over. So that is what we have in mind here. We are yet to finalize that with the operators. At the moment, yes, we are discussing with quite a few of them around the world. Uh, well, we are discussing with like uh, Lufthansa, Tech, Lufthansa Tech, we've spoken to them. Uh, Omni is talking to ATC Lasham. Uh, there are quite a few until we complete. It's not, it's not quite appropriate for me to tell the press video. I think we are going to come up with that. Those are just the operators. Those building it is Arcon, that's the company, that the ones that did all the other buildings also. How large? Okay, we have from end to end, it's 129 meters. That's more than, that's more than a football field. Okay. Meters, that's the inside of it, is by 129. From end to end, it's, it's more than that. This one. Outside, inside is 129. The, the, the space, the, camera, the, the space, yes, the space in there, usable space is about 18,000 square meters. Usable space, that includes the workshops also. We have workshops here for painting, for battery uh, maintenance, for tire maintenance and all that. Those are necessary for engineering. We have some dormitories in there so that if crew could bring their aircraft for maintenance, the crew, the engineering crew can actually have a place that they can sleep over while the aircraft is being done here. So how many of these facilities do we have in Africa? As of now, I'm not sure we have anything better than this, even in Egypt and South Africa. 
So you'll be having about the best in the continent. So the rest of it is not really, the, the other part is the operating capability. Because before they give you approval, they'll see what staff you have and what equipment. Some of the equipment are not off the shelf. And that's why we are finalizing our discussion so that we can start ordering them. The height of it is about 87 uh, meters. That's the highest point that we have there. And if, if you have well, the, the type of aircraft we are looking for, 747, it can take two of it, wing tip to wing tip, losing completely, and the four clad doors are closed and is fully air conditioned. And for the smaller aircraft like the 737, we can have about six of them in there, fully air conditioned. That, that's the maintenance. But you know, there's also the capability for shelter. If you bring six 737s, they will take. That's what it's for. But if they are doing maintenance because of space, they can put 737. For 747, you see. My name is Adem, from National Parliament Commission. Please, I don't know, uh, what shall you doing concerning the fabulous offices that are around this place? The ripple effects on the environment in the fabulous office. I know it's practically unavoidable, but what I do bring to ameliorate the effects on the surrounding environment. That's why, I mean, this is the Nigeria and this is where I'm concerned. Uh, ever since we started, we've been working with the Federal Minister of Environment. So the environment ass impact assessment was done. And we, as of today, they come on a regular basis. In fact, we just we are coming on 22nd. We actually already have a letter there coming. And we make sure that, because the environment is very important to us, it's not, it's not just what impacts on the people, but even on our own operations here. That's why, like farming, we have stopped farming here. Because those farms, when we start the birds, will be coming to the crops. And the best if they enter the aircraft, the most expensive part of the aircraft is the engine. And if it's an axial flow, we could lose that engine. We don't want spent water standing because the baby will attract press. So all those things, we are working with the Federal Ministry of Environment on that. And they come on regular inspection. We have certificate and approvals from them. Thank you very much. Um, I'm my joint television authority. Um, you did say that about 2.5 uh, billion dollars have been spent on engineers training. At the end of engineers and operations and operational staff. Uh, okay. At the end of the day, I'm sorry, I'm thinking dollars. Um, at the end of the day, what, what staff strength? How many would you think can be employed from this project? So that we know it's really a people oriented, we're not just a well it's a, it, <laughs> The, the, the issue that we must understand here, at the moment we have about 477 staff, but that's just the beginning. By the time we finish the MRO itself, we'll be talking about maybe 3,000, because the MRO itself can sustain this airport, not to talk of cargo and others. The people-oriented issue, we cannot employ people that are not qualified. So we are so technical that, first of all, you must be qualified. That whatever process we get from here, we can apply it back into welfare that will benefit the people. Not just feeling that when we start, we'll employ everybody, whether you are qualified or not. But the people that we have employed so far, the people that we have trained, we are not just looking at the airport. A private state has taken a vision, maybe because of its cor cor correlation with technology, that it is actually the industry for the future. And so because of that, we are training even more than what we need for this airport. For example, we trained air traffic controllers. It was just last month that the MD NAMA came and took over all of them into the federal system. They are now with the federal and they just give us enough for our 24 hour operation. So even the engineers, as we train them, when we have more, because here there is a training facility embedded in it. Right now our engineers even go to it at Ababa to go and have that training. We can that we will do that all that here, apart from the maintenance. It attracts like simulator training. We're already talking to, uh, some people are talking to flight safety. Flight safety is number one in simulator training. But well, as as if they come here, when they will come, even our pilots will do their own recurrent training. Our pilots and air crew will do their recurrent training here at this airport, apart from just maintaining the aircraft. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Priscilla, friends in London. Sir, um, you've told us that you're speaking with other um, organizations, BA and so on. Are you saying that 
by the time this is through, we're going to be certified to be able to repair other people's aircraft. That's my first question. My second one is, are there any investment opportunities? And number three, um, is how are we marketing this so that West Africa, for instance, can also bring their aircraft to be repaired? Thank you. Most of what you have said, we are, we are already doing. When we finish, it's not going to repair only aircrafts here. It will repair aircrafts from all over the world. In fact, one of the operators that we are talking to has, it is one of those repairing British Airways aircraft. You understand British Airways has well over 500 aircraft. They cannot on their own repair all their aircraft. So they give these aircraft out, contract them out. One of those companies is talking to us. Nigeria will be very proud when we bring British aircraft, uh, Airways aircraft here to repair. And all that they'll be looking at is to be sure that the operator is appropriate and is qualified. That is all the ones that we are talking to, they have that capability also. And uh, the other question is uh, investment, investment opportunities. Even where we end, where we are now, we've gone round the state. The state itself has gone round. We've gone to the United States, uh, Houston, we've gone to the UK, London. I'm sure very soon we'll go to the other continents and tell them what we have here. As the operator comes, that is even another way of marketing it because by the formula we have, you, the, even the operator knows that you have to share profit because we have invested. So we'll bring, it's a matter of bringing the people that are already in the market to come here. So that we are doing. And uh, did, you, did you have a question? Okay, 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 the market, the market. Thank you. Excellency, uh, are there international control, quality control uh, certifications that uh, pass some of your installations here? Quality control international. This is, this is a very regulated industry. And in fact, let me add that to what she talked about the quality, because we are not, I have said it before. We, with every due respect, we have not done well as far as the maintain the level, the standard is, but we are working towards it. But what we are doing here, I look at Heathrow, I look at JFK, I look at all those other airports. We may not be as big as they are, but quality will not go down because this is an international organization. So that is where we are aiming at. We are not with all due respect looking at Abuja and Lagos. We want them to copy from us. And the international standard, this is an international organization. We have a regulatory body, the NCAA. As long as they come and tell us that this is the standard, we maintain it. We are operating as a private airport. And we have better leverage than even the other 22 federal government airports. Because we must meet the standards. And we are meeting it. And by so doing, some of the other airports are copying from us. You might see some of those things here, you know, here today. We don't allow anybody to come in and influence the, the, the standards here. I must say here, we have a governor that has been very supportive. It is not very easy to spend this much when you do not really see it. So he has been supporting us whenever we bring something professionally. He listens to us and allows us to be. That's where we are, where we are today. So the standards are being met. When the operators come, of course, they will also bring the standards necessary in the, in the international market. What is? Sorry, sorry, completion date. What is it? I just want to find out when we go to Okay, I'm Gloria from Red Power. I want to find out when will it be completed, how much has been spent so far, and when it was started. Just to add to that, sir, my name is Henry Obutini from Channels TV. Um, talking about all these standards, we've seen the standards, but I'm looking at the traffic in the nearest future. Talked about um, the maintenance and all that. I've seen the departure hall and um, the arrival halls. They're a bit too small for me, but it's standard. Okay, I'll, 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 combine, the, I'll combine the two. First, let me say the departure hall you saw is called an interim domestic terminal. We've always said so. We are building the main terminal. Uh, when you go there, you will see. It. I mentioned it earlier on. We have five fingers. Is it, if, yes. Even 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 Lagos does not have. Even Abuja doesn't have five fingers. We have a finger for Airbus 380. No other one in this country has that. So as far as that is concerned, but don't look at don't look at the traffic because it's not only a five one people that will carry. We are very well located here within the hope of this uh, Gulf of Guinea. There are a lot of 
Exxon Mobil is here. They've been begging us, when are you ready, so that they can come through here. As we finish the MRO, an aircraft might require an engine change. It's not going to take that engine to Lagos and it comes here by road. We are going to fly them directly in here. So the, the anywhere, the whole thing, so far, we have gone so far that people don't even believe the traffic we have here. We are like number four in the country now. But that was not the main issue. We are doing like Dubai, build and they will come. We are going to build, we are less than 500, um, Dubai is less than 500,000 people, but you see about 40 something million going every day. So when we build, they will come. And the, your own question was, when, 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 we, when we started, uh, when did this start? When will it be completed? How much has been spent so far? The, the airport itself started, and like I said, the first vehicle moved in here, December 2005. The MRO, by the time we, the president came and uh, inaugurated, it was just a foundation level. So you can well say it was around September 2009. Put it at 2009. And we are looking at completion. The main shell itself is about 90% completed. But we know that we have other things before we can start operations. Like I mentioned to you, the operator is coming. When the operator comes, we will add some of the equipments we need and all that. It takes a little while to do that, but we are assuring you before this administration leaves, an aircraft will be maintained here. There's no doubt about that. Sir, I was just going to ask you, what level of maintenance are you doing? C checks or D checks? C and D checks. But we may not start with D check, as you know. An aircraft that comes in and requires D and C, we will have enough to do that. But we are not saying that the first day C check will be done or D check. But if that comes, why not? There are some countries here that we are aware are buying some new aircrafts. Already we are talking. It is likely they are even going to bring them here for the initial check by the time it's ready. We are discussing at higher level. My name is Gideon Project Manager. This is the same. At this, we brought you to this point so that you can see how far we've gone. We're already doing the CTB. So we are moving from this side on. And the whole CTB is going to be done even before the rents really start coming so that we can uh, finish it within or even earlier than the time that uh, we are projecting. It's the same uh, dimension like the runway, like I told you. It's just the compact in the middle. This is 30 meters, the other one is 45 meters. When we have any reason, close the wrong way, we can actually coordinate and make some landings of certain levels of aircraft here. And for now, it's a parallel taxiway, the main runway. Uh, we expect that traffic will increase, and if that happens, we don't want aircraft landing and wasting time before it makes a 180 degree turn around, when the facility is completed with fast turn-offs, so that as it lands, it turns off into the taxiway. And we know that as traffic increases, we might have a lot of traffic going. They can't line up on the wrong way, they line up on the taxiway to make that, uh, that departure. Okay, okay let, let me just, maybe for the, uh, for, the, for the interest of the media, because we had that as an issue when we were citing the wrong way. As you cite a wrong way, what determines is the prevalent wind direction. The prevalent wind direction. And there's something added to that. There's a procedure. If you take off and you lose your, your radio, you're expected to execute a procedure, continue on your heading until you can have further things to do. That is why it is necessary. This alignment is the same as Calabar, is the same as Eket, is the same as Port Harcourt, is the same as Osubi, because the prevalent wind is, you know, the, the southerly wind. And in case you take off and you lose your radio, you can actually continue without colliding. We had problems because if you align it the other way, you might just take off and run into the... the uh, Calabar is just about 18, 18, uh, uh, 14 uh, from here. Okay. Eight nautical miles from here. So, any other... Any, any? No more. 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 The aircraft itself is around 800,000 square meters. So to accommodate large aircraft and to allow them to maneuver the aircraft. As the chairman says, it's a type. So, ah, in a 
acquired on state. And so far, we've seen a couple of projects. Currently, we are at the Aqua Ibo International Airport. Now, the main thrust of this airport is the cargo, as well as uh, the, over the maintenance, the overhaul, and repairs of air aircraft. And uh, besides all of that, they're also going to be picking passengers. It's some, the project is expected to be completed by next year. Now, I'm happy to be let me start with the chairman of the Ibom Airport Company. I want you to tell us what is most remarkable in this project. What, what is the future of this project? Okay, the first of the airport is uh, this maintenance of the airport. And it brings to an end. Something that you can do. No, it's not the problem. The looking of it. It's not one. Feeding uh, 
uh, into the aviation system in the country. So we hope that this place will be completed in good time uh, so that all commercial aircraft and other forms of aircraft that they are taken out of the country will be returned right here. I know that the Air Force has its own facilities to cover the country. Thank you. Thank you. Anything we can come back all the abandoned. We need something for commercial uh, airplanes that could be operated, we could be maintained here. So I think we add this to the new international wing that we are building. Uh, what Akwebo is doing is to look forward. We want to be the hub you know, of aviation uh, in the uh, coast of Gulf of Guinea. And this is a huge oil and gas uh, destination for the world. And I believe that the Guinea think this way what will uh, help the country. So this good vision, good leadership, and it's adding value. Indeed.